stronger bones, less pain, increased flexibility, strength, and muscle mass, as well as better balance and a reduced risk of falling. These are just some of the benefits of whole body vibration, a subject that I've talked quite a bit about on this channel. But in 2023, some brand new research was published that points to a couple of surprising and really unexpected benefits of whole body vibration. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Let's get into this. One of the main benefits of regular bouts of exercise is a more healthy and robust metabolism. And this article published in October of 2023 in one of the most well-respected scientific journals in the world, Nature, demonstrated that regular bouts of whole body vibration can provide a significant boost to your metabolism, specifically by driving up your resting metabolic rate. The researchers in this study took a bunch of healthy young men in their early 20s and they randomly split them up into two groups. Group number one performed five sessions of whole body vibration each week for two weeks. And group two was the control group. They performed five sessions of sham vibration each week for two weeks. At the outset of this study, researchers used a strict protocol to measure oxygen uptake and they used this information to determine the precise amount of calories that these guys were burning while in a state of complete rest. At the end of the intervention, they repeated these measurements and they found that the whole body vibration group had increased their resting metabolic rate by nearly 20%. And the conclusion from the study was, overall, the findings indicated that just two weeks of repeated administrations of whole body vibrations in combination with local vibrations applied to the abdominal cavity were effective in significantly increasing the resting metabolic rate. Aside from the very impressive results that these researchers produced in a very short amount of time, what was most interesting to me about this study was the vibration protocol that they were using. Now, the frequencies that they were using were very common. They fluctuated between 25 and 52 hertz, but the amplitude that they were using was extremely small, and the position was the most fascinating thing. They had all of these guys lying flat on their stomach while they were applying the vibration, and they did this on purpose specifically to bypass the postural muscles and get as much vibration as they could directly to the abdominal cavity. Now, whole body vibration has been shown to improve gastrointestinal function, and this may be related to increased blood flow to the area, but these researchers also speculated that it indirectly affects the thermic effect of food. Either way, a 20% boost to your resting metabolic rate with just 10 sessions of whole body vibration is pretty outstanding. It's gonna be pretty hard to outdo a 20% boost in metabolism in just two weeks, but if anybody can do it, it's the authors of this paper that was published in May of 2023. These researchers did a systematic review of all of the existing literature on the subject of using whole body vibration to improve cognitive function. These authors state that there is evolving evidence for a potential value of whole body vibration in improving cognition and preventing the development of age-related cognitive disorders. And detailed studies using animal subjects have already demonstrated that whole body vibration increases neuronal plasticity, stimulates the growth of brand new nerve tissue, and increases the transmission of neurotransmitters, all of which led to improved cognitive performance. However, literature on the biological consequences of whole body vibration on the human brain is scanty. And so these researchers dove into the scientific literature to gather up as much information as they could to try and piece together a whole body vibration protocol specifically for optimizing cognitive function. And here's what they found. Overall, there were eight different studies that met the criteria for inclusion in this systematic review, and the vast majority of those showed improved cognitive function as a result of exposure to whole body vibration. But the vibration protocols and the outcome measures used in some of these studies differed pretty significantly from one another, and so what I'd like to do with you now is share some of the commonalities between the studies that produced the best results. The first thing that all of the studies that produced really good results had in common was the frequency of vibration that they were using, which was right at 30 hertz. Now, of the two studies that significantly deviated from that frequency, one of them failed to produce any positive results whatsoever. And so when it comes to optimizing cognitive function, it seems like right around 30 hertz is where you want to be. 
Another thing in common between the studies that produced really good results was the type of vibration that they were using. So the vast majority of the experiments in this review were using linear or vertical displacement vibration. There were also multiple studies that used power plates and their patented triplanar vibration. What we didn't see a lot of is the centrally pivoting machines and that should be kept in mind when designing a protocol for optimizing cognitive function. Another commonality between the studies that produced good results was the total volume of vibration used and the rest periods. So most of the studies included in this review use somewhere between four and six total sets lasting anywhere from a minute to two minutes in length before taking a rest period. The rest periods themselves were usually equivalent to the amount of time that the person had just spent on the vibration platform, and at a bare minimum, it was 50% of that amount of time. So if the person had been on the vibration platform for two minutes, at a bare minimum, they were taking a one minute rest without vibration before getting back onto the vibration plate. When it came to the amplitude, that is the distance that the vibration plate moves up and down on each vibratory cycle, and the physical position that a person was in while being exposed to vibration, there were some significant differences among the various studies that were included in this review. But I would point out that all of the studies included used an amplitude of 5 millimeters or less, and in the few studies where they used a really low amplitude, the person was always seated with a chair on top of the vibration platform, meaning the vibration had a straight shot through the chair and up to the head without having to overcome the powerful muscles in the legs and the postural muscles. I would also point out that there were multiple studies showing that both a seated position and a standing position in combination with whole body vibration can be effective for improving cognitive function. The two exceptions were when a person was seated but reclined and when a person was standing but in like a half squat position with their knees bent to about 45 degrees and their leg muscles fully engaged. And even though we need more research to complete the picture about this exciting new topic, we can say at this point that training with whole body vibration can create significant improvements in cognitive performance, and specifically things like attention span, reaction time, anticipatory skills, mental flexibility, and dual task performance. And the program that seems to produce the best results involves using a frequency of 30 hertz, an amplitude of somewhere between three and five millimeters. A standing position appears to be better than a seated position, although we do need to make sure that some of that vibration is making its way up to the head. When in that standing position, you can reduce vibratory forces to the head simply by bending your knees, and you can increase vibratory forces to the head by using what's called a tandem stance, where one foot is positioned directly in front of the other. You can think of this kind of like a gas pedal and a brake pedal that allows you to fine tune the training to make sure that it's comfortable for you. The total number of sets performed should be somewhere between four and six, and those sets should last one to two minutes each, and they should be followed by an equal amount of rest time during which you are not exposed to vibration. The total number of training sessions per week, you've got some flexibility there because good results were produced with anywhere from one to five total sessions. And right now you can access this technology from the comfort of your own home and get all of the benefits that whole body vibration has to offer, including increased bone density, strength and muscle mass, better balance and coordination, increased cognitive function, and improve flexibility at a huge discount because PowerPlate is offering one of their biggest and best sales of the year where you can save 25% on their entire home collection. And for members of the Pain Fix Protocol community, they're gonna throw in a free pulse massage gun with every single purchase. To access this special offer, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen. I'll also put links for it in the description down below this video. Beyond that, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you head out of here and I'll see you next time.